A man happened to notice one day that there were no bees in the trees. All kinds of fruits and vegetables started disappearing from the stores. Before long, the only thing left were bananas and lots and lots of tomatoes. The man became alarmed when he read in the newspaper that a certain scientist had predicted the end of human existence. But when he read what a certain philosopher had to say about it, he didn't understand a thing. But surely somebody came up with a way to pollinate plants without using bees. He heard about a good idea that had in China. They used brushes to pollinate the plants. One at a time. They've also made an electric bee, but that didn't work so well. In other words, nature pollinates plants better than any artificial mechanism. The man remembered how he felt like he was in a beehive once when he went to Japan to get treatment for a health problem. He felt the same way when he went walking through Jerusalem. And even quite recently when he went to Isola to visit a scientist friend of his. The friend phoned a kibbutz in Israel that specializes in producing bumblebees and ordered two packets. For the past several years his friend has been researching the physics of flying. He is again occupied with the old myth that says bumblebees 
shouldn't be able to fly. Their sophisticated mass productions of bumblebees Bombus terrestris allows them to offer pollination services to thousands of hectares of greenhouse tomatoes in Israel, Europe, Japan, South Korea and Russia. Two days later, a package of bumblebees arrived in Slovenia. After opening it, the scientists eagerly read the instructions which included a true story about New Zealand. When farmers from England settled in New Zealand, they planted clover. But a few years later, all the clover had died out. When Darwin came to New Zealand, the farmers told him the clover wouldn't grow there. They had four different kinds of bumblebees brought over from England and in a few years the clover was again producing lots of seeds. The man played around with the idea of starting up a small company for pollination services. Services are important. His service would help preserve nature and humanity. It would be in the spirit of the time. He heard that two years ago a lack of bees for the California almond crop caused bee enterprises to jump, attracting beekeepers from the other side of the country. In the US, many beekeepers make more money from providing pollination services than from making honey. Maybe he could even raise Carniola honeybees, Kransko Siuko, a variety that is indigenous to Slovenia and has a number of excellent properties. And now, Carniola honeybees are even making virgin honey a kind of honey untouched by human hand. What really convinced him was the fact that Slovene honeybees had long ago been settled in Vienna. A few years ago, on Piccadilly Circus in central London, four beehives have been set up on the roof of the luxury department store Fortnum and Mason. and the English treat them like queens. 
those carniolans produced some 200 to 300 jars of London honey per year. When the man went to buy his tickets for the opera, he also bought a jar of opera honey. For 25 years, those bees on the roof of the opera house Garnier have been producing honey from the finest Paris locations, from the trees and shrubs in the Bois de Boulogne, the chestnut trees on the Champs-Élysées, and the linden trees of the Palais Royal. The man was amazed. He had grown up on a farm and as a boy he had been very close to nature. He had always thought of the city as something that was destroying nature and saw the countryside as preserving it. Now, for the first time in his life he was more worried about nature surviving in the countryside than in the city. 